قديم ده خلاص ده اسمه ده اسمه سبيريت واندر هي اي تروي اي ثانك جاد ذات اي هاد ذا بليسنج اوف برينج ان ذيس هولي هولي كروس تشيرش اند اي ريكول ذا ميموريز 10 ييرز اور 11 ييرز اجو وين اي واز سيرفين ذيس تشيرش اند اي ستيل هاف جود ريليشنشيب with the church and with the congregation. Uh, I don't want to mention names uh, lest I forget somebody. I thank God that the, the church is growing as I expected at that time, that the church will grow and multiply through the service of Abuna, Benjamin, and the servants. I'd like also to congratulate you for the start of the great fasting. We call the great fasting the spring. The spring. We don't see spring yet, but this is the spring of the spiritual life. If you use it, you will gain fruits. If you neglect it, you lose the season. The season of prayers, the season of fasting, the season of doing good things, season of repentance. So let us speak about the gospel today. The Lord mentioned three things. And this is part of the Sermon of the, of the Mount. The Sermon of the Mount, or Al-Aziz al al-Jabal, are three chapters. Chapter, Matthew chapter uh, 5, 6, 7. And this part is from Matthew 6. And he mentioned that the worship based on three things. When you do charitable deeds, when you give, number one, Whenever you pray and give instructions or directions how to pray, and then whenever you fast. And then he, the disciples taught, asked him, taught us how to pray. And the answer was like this. When you pray, say, our Father art in heaven. So this is the basic and the essential prayer that all of us pray many times a day. And we want to understand it, then I choose one of them, of the seven prayers in this prayer, and talk about it. So this prayer is formed of seven litanies or asking God for three things, or oh, seven things. Three related to God and four related to man. I want you to, when you pray Abel al or our Father art in heaven, don't say it like very quick without understanding, but I want you to mean every word in it. Understand and mean it. This is the prayer. The prayer is not just uh, saying magic words and it will work. No. The prayer changed me when I understand it. I remember a story. A person was praying. And he said, our father art in heaven. And he heard a voice, yes, son. And who are talking? And I am God. Uh, you called me and you said, our father art in heaven. Here I am. What do you want? And you know, I don't mean that, that you reply me. I was just praying. And he continued conversation to explain to him what is the purpose of prayer. You call God our Father out in heaven. He's listening to you and is ready to fulfill what He promised and what we ask. So, the three things related to God is our Father out in heaven. Number one, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. So, three things related to God. Hallowed be thy name, which means I want your name to be holy. Your name means your presence. The name of the person means him. I want the Lord to be holy in my life. And I mean it. Hallowed be thy name means I want to be holy in my thoughts, in my house, in my church, every time that your name be holy all over the world and every time. Then if we go to the second one, thy kingdom come. Okay, let me ask you a question. Where is the kingdom of God? In heaven, right? No, actually no. 
the kingdom of God is where the king is. The king is here, right? So this is the kingdom of God. The king is in my heart, so this is the kingdom of God. We think that we will go to the kingdom of God. Unless you live in the kingdom of God here, you will not see it. You will be aliens. It's strange. You go to some place you don't know. Actually, you know where are we going? We are going to the kingdom which is here on earth and in heaven. So thy kingdom come. I want you that you become my king, the king of my life. And I allow this to happen. How many kings we have in our lives? Who control my life? The world, the culture, friends, misunderstanding. All these are controlling my life, but I want you, thy kingdom come, to be my king and the king of the world. We move to the third one related to God. Thy will be done. It's easy to say. Thy will. What do you want? And I postpone this because I expand it a little bit at the end. And then we have four related to my life. The first one is our daily bread give us this day. Our daily bread, not the day, the day of tomorrow, after tomorrow, after a year, and I'm worried about the future, but I ask God for just today, just today, live day by day, don't be worried about the future. The future is in his hand. I ask him one thing. This day, give me the daily bread of today. I trust you and live day by day. Don't think too much in the future because the future is in his hand. Number two, forgive us our trespasses. Forgiveness. Because I'm a sinner and I'm asking for repentance. Every time I pray our Father out in heaven, I ask for forgiveness because I'm a sinner. If I think that I'm not a sinner because I'm better than others, so why are I praying? Don't say it. Forgive us our trespasses. What are my trespasses? I don't know because I don't examine myself. We have to examine ourselves on daily basis, especially when we pray this. Number three, do not lead us in temptation. The bad temptations. Coming from my desires, bad desires, or war of the devil, or the lust of the flesh. And the last one is deliver us from the evil one. Protect me from the attacks of the devil. And we'll finish it. Actually, the church added one sentence. Through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Because he said that anything you ask in my name will be given to you. It is not in the, in the, in the like, words of the, our Father, but we added it because he said that anything you ask in my name, I'll give it to you. So I leave this, this seven, I'll take one of them. So what do you think the most difficult one? In my opinion, the most difficult one is thy kingdom done. Thy king, um, thy will be done. Thy will be done. I want your will to be done. So I expand it a little bit. Even Jesus himself, when he prayed in the covenant Thursday in Gethsemane, he said, not my will, but thine be done. And sometimes we misunderstand this. We think that Jesus is not happy with the cross and he wants to skip it. But actually here Jesus is praying as the humanity. He took the humanity in him. And actually he humbled himself. Even here he forsook his own will. Even it is perfect. And his will is exactly the will of the Father. But here is not is speaking as divine, is speaking as human, humanity, asking God the Father, thy will be done, not my will, 
be done. And we have some common questions. I am sure that really we want to, to, to know the, the will of God, especially when we take an important decision. Like, like the decision of marriage, the decision of joining school, like the moving from city to city or from country to country, we only ask for the will of God whenever it is an important and crucial decision in my life. This is not correct. And the second one is how to know it. Oh yeah, we pray and we listen and we try to listen to the voice of God, but many times I'm deceived because I listen to my own voice. My Lord, I'm so comfortable with this decision. And this is the will of God. I'm not saying that this is not this is wrong, but sometimes we have deception. If you know it, would you accept it? You accept the will of God? Of course. But actually the correct term is would you do it? And this is the point I want to stress. Is not only that God revealed his will. God already revealed all what he wants from me. Be it legal or not. We should do the will of God. He will not do his will. He just declared his will. He was just to say, I want you to do this. And it is our duty and responsibility. When you know the will of God, you should do it. Listen to this. In Mark 3, 35, whoever does the will of God is my brother and my sister and my mother. Whoever does the will of God, he did say that I will do my will. This means that he forces, enforces his will on us and this is against his love and the freedom. If you know the will of God, you have to do it. Another person. Ephesians 5 17. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what is the will of God is. Understand the will of God. In John 2 17. And this we hear it every literature. Actually, this one we hear it every literature. And the world is passing away, and the last of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Doing the will of God. So where is the will of God? The will of God is what he asks us to do. In the Bible. Every word in the Bible is the will of God. I mean the will of God. Anything, any commandment. This is the will of God. Do it. But I hear it, but I don't accept it. Or I, I say that I cannot do it. Let us take some examples. First one, St. Mary. St. Mary accepted and did the will of God. The will of God declared through Archangel. He said to her that he will conceive and have a, a baby and this baby will be called the Son of God. He said, she said that, yes, please do it. I accept it. And actually, in uh, the first miracle, which is the miracle of Hannah of Galilee, she said this word, whatever he says, the word of God, the word of God is what he wants. So listen carefully to the Bible. When you read the Bible, the Bible is for me, for everybody, it's personal. Don't say that, ah, um, this verse is suitable for so and so, and this verse I cannot do it. Try it. There is a certain power in the commandment. But this is Shaisa ultimate mandatory or obligatory. This is why I accept it. We are Christians. So we accept it. Any word come from God. Go to the Bible. How many verses I read every day? Every verse there is a will of God. And I'm not waiting that it will be done. No, I do it. I should do it. Move forward and do it. St. Anthony agreed. Like he was at, uh, 
sitting in the church like this. And he heard the deacon saying one word, if you want to be my disciple, go sell what you have, carry the cross and come follow me. This is the will of God. He said, this is the will of God. I do it. And he did it. Yeah. Okay. So there are lot levels. But at least I try the first level. The work is for everybody. Sell what you have. This doesn't mean money at all. This means the ego. That you are like, like, you like it. Sell what you like. Your dignity, your prestige, whatever you like, say it. This is the commandment of God. And many people like this. So, in the whispers of yesterday, I'll take one example. What is the word of God? In the whispers in Matthew and today in the gospel. It's repeated for a purpose. But we don't hear. And we don't read. And I advise you, before you come to church, read the readings. If the message of today, what is the message of today? It's just not just the sermon. It's what's written in the Bible. So in this verse, he said this, whenever you stand to pray, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. Whenever you pray. If you have something against somebody, Forgive him. It's a commandment. This is the will of God. I want us just today to understand that every word in the Bible is the will of God. Like loving one another is the will of God. He, want, he wants us to do it according to explanation of the Bible. Yeah, love one another as I love you. And if you go to like that, it is with St. Paul. He expanded it. And show it how to fulfill it in method of today. And if he sins against you seven times a day, and seven times and a day returns to you saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. Forgiving one another. As the Lord forgive us. And actually we say this in the prayer. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And he said also, if you go to church for communion, and then you remember that somebody, you have something against somebody, leave your sacrifice and go reconcile. It's a commandment. It's the will of God. The will of God is to reconcile. And the first prayer we will pray now is reconciliation prayer. We have to be one. This is the will of God. And he mentioned this five times. In John 17, he prayed to God the Father. And he said that, I want all of them to be one. As you and I are one. How can we be one? By reconciliation. By the intention. By the act. Go and say, hello. Go and say, I'm sorry. Go and say, let us reunite again together. And then, we are eligible to take communion, which makes us all one. One bread, one faith, one body. We become one body through communion. But we have to reconcile. Go to every word in the Bible. This is the will of God. When you say, thy will be done, it is not easy. God will not, will never do his will unless you do it. Then he will help. Then he will fulfill his will. And the will of God is good. The Bible says so. The will of God is good, fruitful, and um, mature. If you go to the Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. So this is the will of God. And finally, I'll finish with these three things. What should I do? Of the will of God. Number one, knowledge. To know the will of God, you have to read his recommendations. Recommendations are in the Bible. If you don't read the Bible, how can you know the will of God? Never know it. So if you don't know it, I'm ignorant. The Bible says that my people perish because of ignorance. 
the most ignoring. And as I told you, it's special. Don't dis distribute it to everybody. It's suitable for my husband, my wife, my kids, my neighbors, the person beside me, and all that. No, it's me. It's me. Point to yourself. Point to your heart and thoughts. Thy will be done, I do it, if I know it. So sometimes we need guidance from the Father, from Christian, and trust the will of God. May the Lord give us understanding where the will of God is, and accept it and do it. To Him is the glory forever. Amen.